and here we are once again with another episode. This is episode number three, three of The Geek Out. And we got some new topics this time around, but the same people as last time. We have an awesome spread of names here. We got myself. I don't know if I'm awesome. I hope I am. I don't know. But I'm James. I'm the moderator. Next to me over there is the awesome and amazing Lauren. Hello. And right below me is the amazing Robert with his Punisher t-shirt. Waffles. And going back to Lauren again, she's wearing her Blue Man Group t-shirt too. So if you have never checked out that show, go check it out. It's an awesome show. It's This isn't a drop or anything like that. They haven't sponsored us or anything, but it's just, you know, mad respect. Awesome show. Love it. Go check it out. And then in the other corner over here, we have the one and only Kiefer. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> and, and he's wearing his cool PlayStation shirt. And we have some uh, new topics this time around, uh, clearly. I mean, every episode we're going to talk about something new. We might have a shot back to something else in the past. But this time around, we have three topics. And the first one here is one that's been brought up many times in, well, for, for forever. I mean, for decades. And it, the answer is usually always the same, especially for anybody who's a hardcore fan of anime. And uh, the question is, is there a difference between... American cartoons and Japanese anime. And uh, if you're an anime fan, you know what the answer is to this. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, there is a difference. Uh, there is a difference. That's my opinion. I'm just throwing it in there. But we're going to start off with Lauren. What do you think about this? Oh, I think there's absolutely a difference, not only in visual style, but in story. I think visually, it's definitely, in my, in my opinion, it tends to have a little bit more of a sharp side to it. You know, a little bit more angular. Um, and when it comes to uh, story-wise, it definitely seems anime tends to have a much wider audience um, than most, not all, but most animation does, at least in the Amer at least American animation. So, um, on to you, Keeper. Well, I also kind of agree. I believe that anime is its own thing. It's not like copying cartoons and cartoons are kind of taking from anime but anime is its own thing it's trying to basically make more depth in the world like that's what i believe at least the worlds have more depth the uh, characters have more detail i believe in like the facial expressions and emotion they can capture that more in japanese anime i think it's more just style and type of style influenced in the animations uh what about you robert well, I guess I'm the odd man out, so I'm going to say there are some differences, but there's some similarities. Um, both of them use voiceover actors. Both of them are, can be done on drawing and through computers. Both do tell a story. Um, anime definitely would tell a more interesting story, and depending on what cartoon or animation you're looking at, can tell a story as well, whether it be a 20-minute short, for Saturday morning, or a long, drawn-out miniseries. Um, I can go back to Batman. I can even go back to Spawn. Um, Adult Swim. Uh, so, I respect anime. I think anime is cool, but it's different. But in my opinion, it's not so different from a cartoon. It's, it's how you look at it. So, in my opinion, they are a little bit different, but they are similar. But I respect animation. I respect anime. So that's, that's just my thing. Uh, James? I definitely, I, I, I've shared my opinion. I, I, I definitely feel that there's a difference. Uh, but if that, that line is getting blurry as we move forward into the future because there's just so much influence that we're taking from each other. Uh, there are some anime series that have borrowed from American cartoons and stuff, especially with their goofiness. And then... Uh, uh, American animation has borrowed heavily from Japanese anime over the years, and then you can see this in uh, Batman Ninja and and uh, especially things like uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales. Uh, the just that the, the the breakup of all the characters that were in that movie in the multiverse was fantastic, and you have that one anime character, which is clearly she she stood separate from everybody else in terms of uh, how they all, you know. Look, they had different animation styles, and I mean, they all kind of, you know, had their own thing. You had noir, you had the the goofy pig, and everything else. I mean, it was just you, there was so much separation there. But anime definitely has its own niche, and it's definitely made for. Uh, there's a lot of uh, a good portion of the anime industry is made for the mature audience, 
and uh, but at the same time it's made for kids as well you know with pokemon and things like that you know so they do relate to the saturday morning cartoons for children at the same time they have things that work their way up to doesn't matter how old you are you might you're still going to find something or could find something in the anime universe that you might relate to and like and like gundam or anything else and say you know i I like this even at my age and we're cartoons you know i mean given you have some hardcore fans like robert when he's 80 years old he's probably still going to be sitting down watching tom and jerry because he's a dedicated fan yep tom and jerry transformers the movie thank you very much so there you go so we have answers uh there is a difference there it is merging together it is getting harder to tell uh, that that line is graying out and uh and becoming blurry so who knows what the future is going to hold uh but it anime has always stood out as an interesting style but we'll, we'll see what comes up next and uh you know 20 years from now and see what everything looks like and who knows you won't be able to tell anything apart uh the second topic we have to discuss today was brought by one of our viewers or brought up uh or requested uh that viewer's name is sherry and a very awesome viewer and she is a big fan of loki and and tom who plays loki and um uh, i'm just gonna assume it's because you know the girls seem to really love tom i'm just i'm gonna assume it's because he's just really good at acting must be it but uh it's an interesting character an awesome character within the marvel universe and she wants to hear more about it so uh there is a lot to talk about even though there's not a lot we know about what's to come in the within the marvel universe about loki but there's still a lot there including loki having his own tv show that's going to be uh, popping into the disney plus streaming uh platform soon and i believe that's next year maybe uh but the uh, it's gonna be a mini series so it's not gonna be a full series or anything like that but that does show that loki has a place within the marvel universe uh and then there's the question of uh in the end game we've all seen this movie by now we do know that you know everybody dies everybody comes back yay we lose a couple people unfortunately iron man's one of them uh may he may that character rest in peace but uh loki is also one of them as well he 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 doesn't make it early in uh very early in the movie and he never comes back you know and the viewers are left to believe that loki's gone that he wasn't part of the 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 names that were able to be you know brought back through the process in which they were brought back with because he his death was kind of separate from all of that so then there's the question is is he gone is he not going to come back is he done in the movies is he only going to have the tv show or are they going to try to sneak him back in Given this is all speculation, since we don't know anything just yet, but we're going to start with Lauren. I think that the possibilities are endless as to what they can do. They can, you know, they can bring him back. Or, you know, they can come up with a way. Or they can, you know, maybe go back and do separate stories about him from before, I I guess, before Endgame. Um, Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm going to be very interested and seeing what they can come, what they come up with. It's, I mean, the imagination behind all of these movies is just absolutely mind blowing to me. So I'm sure that, you know, it will live up to whatever, you know, we hope if not completely, you know, go right past it. So, uh, Robert. Okay. It's time for me to go into my, um, uh, let's see, how can I put this? So Loki is the God of mischief. So, number one, so is he really truly dead, or somehow he faked us out, and he's actually alive? So, that's debatable. Number two, we also have the time travel. Um, He's dead in one version, but as we've seen with Gamora, and going back in time, they could bring him back. And number three, during the scene where they were... In the government building, he did get the Tesseract Stone, picked it up, and left. So, is there a way to bring him back? Sure. Um, Oh, and last but not least, let's forget Doctor Strange's (laughs) multi-universe. So, uh, yeah. Hey, I think he can come back. So, no problem. Uh, Keeper? Yep. I also agree with that. It's the Marvel Universe. You can basically do anything in it. Like, they can be like, oh, yeah, they time traveled back. Loki's back. Or, you know, they can be like, oh, yeah, here's another dimension, Loki. And then they can just branch off from there. And then it's not that hard to take uh, make characters come back. <laughs> they kind of, I think they kind of had to do that uh, early on with the comics code, how they're like, oh, you can't kill anyone. So then they always had to bring people back. 
whenever they died in the comics. So I feel like they already made a bunch of ways that they can just easily bring everyone back. So it's all the pieces are there. So I feel like it's just putting them in the right place at this point. What about you, James? That's exactly true. And and I think Roberts, uh, he really touched on the one thing that I was hoping somebody was going to catch is, yes, in the Endgame movie, uh, when they towards the end of the movie, when they go back in time to try to get all the, you know, to, to try to fix everything, you know, yes, he did get his hands on the Tesseract and he poured it out of there. You know, and he changed time by doing that, you know, and that was like the one a, a biggest hint or at least East, not an Easter egg, just that hint, that, that possibility, that thread that Marvel threw in there to really get everybody to start to think like, well, wait a minute, is that how he's going to come back? Does he exist because now because of that? Because if he poured it out of there and he can start, change the future uh, through that, at least within his timeline, he might never have been there to begin with to die. Uh, who knows? Or they might merge the multiverses together somehow, like Robert mentioned. You know, that's just one possibility and an endless Possible pool of possibilities. So yeah, uh, he can definitely come back, and uh, and it's exciting to really still have to have that that clear thread that's just dangling in front of you. That you know, and it'll be interesting if that's not what they use. It'll be interesting if they never even go back and refer to that again, and they have a whole nother idea. But uh, but what about the TV show? The TV show we really don't know much about the TV show. But uh, I mean, are we excited about that? Uh, did, did you think that's going to be as successful as some of these other franchises, uh, or at least uh, these uh, subsidiaries within the Marvel universe? Do you think it's really going to hold up? Uh, I I personally think it will because you know you see some of these other characters like uh, Agent Carter who did fantastic, you know, and a lot of people don't know who Agent Carter is, you know, but they made a whole series just for her. And that was awesome. It was a great series. You know, so uh, I think there's a chance that Loki series might have the same success, and uh, which will be a good thing because we need that with some of these other side stories with, you know, She-Hulk and everything else that's planned out in the near future, which is, you know, things that people aren't used to seeing on the on the screen. So uh, we'll move that back over to Lauren. Oh, uh, with the amount of... Just with the original programming that I've seen come across Disney+, Plus and the amount of work that they've done in it. I know it's I know it's slightly changing genres, but thinking of the amount of money that they put into The Mandalorian, each episode in itself was basically, I, I think it was multi-millions of dollars worth of time and computer graphics and manpower per episode. What they can do with that kind of financing for the new Loki series, it's I would think that it will be just as high quality as any movie that they're going to come up with. So it should be really... I, I'm looking forward to seeing what, what they're able to do with this. Um, Keeper. Well, I think that they're going to do really well, and I think it might be a really good thing, but I don't think they're going to. it's going to be as big of a hit as some of the other things like Agent Carter or anything like that, mainly because it's only specifically on their channel, Disney+. Plus. I feel like that's a big issue. Plus, you don't know if they're going to uh, make you get the Disney Plus Plus or whatever, the uh, premium version. Or wait, no, like buy it, you know, like they did with the Mulan movie where you had to buy it specifically. Not sure if they're going to do that. So if they do that, that could also hinder some uh, sales and also the wide overview of how people what think people think about it. So I'm not exactly sure. This is all kind of new for Disney, at least. So I, I'm sure... What about you, Robert? What do you think? Well, I'm hoping for good things. I'm between Loki, uh, Winter Soldier, and Falcon. Uh, we have WandaVision. And recently I heard that even my man uh, Nick Fury is also getting a series. Uh, yeah, there's, there's some good good stuff coming down the pipe. And as far as Loki, maybe we'll get to see an origin story, or maybe we get to see, uh, maybe he's sitting in the back watching everything unfold. Maybe we get to see how he go back in time and keep himself from killing. Maybe, uh, maybe he creates a dummy of himself, and he just watches Thanos, and then maybe he just enjoys other life. I mean, maybe he tries to be a good guy. I mean, once again, he is the god of mischief, so who knows? Uh, uh, Matt Damon was Loki. <laughs> doing that play so go figure uh james 
I think that uh, the TV show would be a good opportunity for them to help fill in some of that gap and explain what's coming next, or at least leave it open and give a hint to it, maybe give us some hope. Uh, or it might be completely different, and it's it's most likely going to be before any of that ever happened. It's going to be a side story or something. Uh, it, I think it's going to survive, and it's going to do a good job. Kiefer does make a great point of the, of the fact that it's going to be limited to the Disney+. Plus. I hope, if Disney wants to survive, they really do need to not charge extra for those shows, like they did the Mulan movie. The, Mul- the Mulan movie made a lot of, uh, I don't want to say enemies, but it, it did it did rub people the wrong way, for sure. And I've spoke to many of them myself, and that's just me. You know, a lot of people have said, no, I'm not going to do it. I want to see the movie so badly, but I'm not going to pay extra for it when I'm already paying for the package to get what it's supposed to be on. It's just not right. And that makes sense. So if you're going to release it to a streaming channel, release it to the streaming channel. Don't add on a premium fee on top of that, because now you're just milking people. And that's like Call of Duty and Activision and and Treyarch with all of their constant in-game purchases that just turns this $60 game, which is already pricey, 60 to to $100 game into like a $300 game. And now you just have a lot of people sitting there going, I don't know if I want to get the next game now. So I think it'd be wise for them to just add it like the Mandalorian to Disney Plus and just be able to enjoy it as just another thing on there like Netflix or anything else, just another series. And that will allow them to succeed in this and compete. And it'll make sure Loki has a future. Uh, so that, that was a great conversation there. Uh, we have one last topic. Uh, it is a... Uh, Completely different from some of the other things we've uh, talked, spoken about so far, but this one falls into the world of computers and uh, processors and the architectures and everything that both companies, Intel and AMD, are working on. And the focus on is, um, is Intel falling far behind in the processor war. Uh, are, they really win when it comes to single core processing. They, they really they just destroy the industry on that and they're able to achieve past five you know five gigahertz and beyond and with continuous uh speeds uh when it comes to that when it comes to multi-core processing um they were constantly neck to neck with amd until amd came out with their their ryzen processor and it just destroyed the market uh and they just kind of danced it in front of uh, intel's face with like a 16 core processor like haha we did it another thing is uh Intel's been trying to promise and push for a 10 nanometer, which is size, uh, processor uh, to change from their uh, their current 14 nanometer architecture. And they've been in this constant battle for a very long time, and it's setting them behind because they haven't achieved it yet. And, uh, and we may not see it until next year. Uh, and that's going to be with the new Rocket Lake that's coming next year. Uh, and... And even with that, you know, we still might, you know, that might end up being a 14, but we're hoping it's going to be a 10. And um, meanwhile, AMD has already achieved 10 nanometers. AMD has already broken out, you know, they, they've broken their barriers, their walls when it comes to multi-core processing, because, you know, not only did they dangle the fact that, hey, look, we have a 10 nanometer processor. Hey, not only that, uh, we have 16 cores in our processor over here. Then they're like, just let's let's really dig our hand and our, our finger into this wound here for Intel and say, hey, look, now there's a 32 core processor and now a 64 core processor, which is insane. Again, Intel wins a single core uh, war because they can go above five gigahertz and and sustain that and uh, without any issues. Uh, AMD, on the other hand, to get those 64 cores, you're it's dumbed down to like I think like three gigahertz or something like that, you know, or 3.2. Uh, regardless, it's not as fast for its single core operation. It's just that multi core is amazing. While Intel is still stuck within eight to ten cores. You know, so they're they're having a hard time breaking through that barrier. They're having a hard time making their chips smaller. Not that that's always a good thing because uh, even Intel's admitted with their 10 nanometer chips when they do get the, get to that position within their timeline, they said it's not going to be as productive. It's not going to be as efficient as their 14 or 22 or anything like that, you know, because now you're starting with something really small and you're going to build your way back on that with enhancements over the years to, to bring that up to par with everything else, you know, but the idea is getting something that we have now smaller eventually. You know, but with that, they're they're constant more to get there. They're falling behind, I think. Uh, and AMD is just owning the industry, and uh, and that's happened before in the past. But this is the longest and the largest effect I think they've ever had on the industry, uh, or at least the hold on the industry, which is quite interesting. So it'll be uh, inter- interesting to see where Intel uh, goes in the future to try to get out of this hole they seem to have dug themselves into. So that I think uh, introduces things pretty heavily there and gives a lot of things to touch on. So we're going to pass this off to Kiefer. 
Well, I believe that Intel currently is probably working on something larger. They don't. They're trying to kind of release stuff. In the meantime, they're trying to make something that'll actually really compete with uh, AMD. That's what I'm assuming, at least. But I don't exactly know how this is going to go because AMD is really doing really well in the market so far with their 64 core processor that's commercially available to people rather than like their top of the line things that only uh, big companies can use. Like that's really insane. I feel like AMD is getting so far ahead that Intel is going to have to really try and catch up. It's not. It's going to be a game of cat and mouse, except AMD is just so far ahead. It, not even really plausible for uh, Intel to currently compete unless they come out with something huge on the market really soon. Well, that's all I have to say for that. What about um, you, Robert? Um, okay. Uh, which one's in the um, raw computer, Republic of Gaming? The which one what? Which processors in the Republic of Gaming laptop? The ROG, if you have to guess. That's a good question. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't know what the processor is in the ROG series. Uh, the um, it, it's not. If it is a Ryzen, it's not going to be like the 32 or 64 core. At most, it'll be 16, and I don't think it is. I think the ROG series. The last time I ever looked at, it, unless they've uh, taken a step further on things, I think the most that it went was like eight cores. But I could be wrong. Okay. Well, since the computer's name after me, ROG. Uh, whichever is in that computer, I support. Um, and that's as far as I can go tech-wise. Lauren, that's for you. Next. All I will say is I look forward to seeing what's coming down the line. Because as, uh, as I'm discovering with the laptop that I have now, which is only a few years old, um, the way the technology is moving, it's it should be absolutely fascinating to watch over the next few years. So. Yeah. All right, back to you, James. Speaking of laptops, <laughs> we, this would be a great opportunity to throw a jab at a certain company. Uh, Lauren's laptop, which is amazing, it's only a couple years old, is an Acer laptop. Uh, and uh, I, I think we, we've had the most issues <laughs> with that laptop lately. For one, the webcams never worked. I mean, it worked in the beginning, and then eventually it just stops. You can tell the ribbon inside is probably either came loose or damaged, so that was a manufacturing issue, but you haven't heard any recalls on it. And then, of course, uh, Wi-Fi and Ethernet uh, for a laptop that's only two years old. You know, it's it's oh. Wi-Fi is getting like you know two to three, four maybe megabits per second in either direction, and and on Ethernet hardline connection, she's getting like thirty. You know, and it just that that doesn't make sense. You know, so it's, that's just a little extra toss in right there, a bonus little bit. We we brought up the Blue Man Group and 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 uh, shown some light on that. Now we go on the other side of the coin and say no. How about a company that we we got to shake the shame stick at here? Uh, but, <laughs> uh, the I, I think that Intel has a chance. They always have a chance. They have the they just have so much power behind them and so much money and everything. It's just at the moment they've they've dug themselves in a hole because they put so much effort into breaking this barrier that they're having trouble with for some reason that it's it's putting everything else behind and. That allowed AMD to skip forward. And AMD uh, definitely just, uh, I don't want to say they accidentally just came across something and, aha, we have the answer. Whoa, you know, we just, what do you know? This is our lucky day. I mean, they've been working hard on it as well. And it's just that whatever approach they took um, to be able to break that barrier with, it was successful where Intel's was, okay, if we're going to try harder, you know, because they can't, you know, clearly take their patented technology and say, well, now we're, you know, 10 nanometers and multi-core two and you know, to that kind of level. No, it's just, it, it is what it is. They're stuck with where they, what, the direction they've taken. They have to, you know, they've got so much money and time invested into it. They got to continue with this. Ray AMD was just like, well, we got off lucky. We broke the barrier earlier and they're going to take advantage of this. And they are definitely taking advantage of it. The disadvantage for the consumers is the fact that it's so expensive because that 64 core processor is like $3,500. And that's just the processor. So you can imagine how expensive that computer is going to be once you build it. Because like the motherboards alone for those those processors are like six to $800. So uh, it's not exactly available to everyone, but uh, it's still available. And anyone, if they had the money, could buy it. So that's cool, uh, and Intel's probably sweating pretty hard right now, especially since the Rocket Lake. Another thing is uh, PCI Express 4.0, which I forgot to bring up. 
Uh, PCI Express 4.0 is the newest version of PCI Express. Uh, it's uh, it's right there, coming around the corner. You're going to see new video cards and everything else. It's going to take advantage of this and this new bandwidth. They're able to to pass along through that. Uh, uh, that interface and it's dependent upon the processor supporting it and AMD's Ryzen series supports PCI Express 4 already and Intel still doesn't even with their stuff that's coming out now uh, we're not going to see PCI Express 4.0 until next year uh, with that Rocket Lake processor uh, so who knows what's going to happen now uh, Intel is definitely behind, way behind, which kind of you know sucks for me because I am an Intel fan. I've only built one AMD uh, computer ever, and it was good for a little while, but then I built my next Intel after that, and it just owned it. So it just reinforced my own fanhood of of or, of just being a fan of of Intel. But I think they need to really get their gears together, get their act together, get their gears moving, something like that, and catch up. So no pressure, Intel, but Catch up, because I want a 32-core Intel processor that can reach 5 gigahertz. That's another thing. I want to see the single core, single core performance go, you know, stay up there as well. No sacrifices. Does anybody else has uh, anybody else have any input on this? So, no. I um I hope like similar to what what uh, Nvidia did recently, like where they had like the went from the 10 series to the 20 series with RTX graphics and how that wasn't a huge jump. And then all of a sudden from the 20 to the 30 series, it was quite a larger jump uh, for quite a bit cheaper than the 20 series as well. I hope Intel starts doing, uh, moving in that direction as well, trying to, although maybe their processors may still not have as many cores, get faster processors out on the market with less cores, but have them for cheaper than what uh, um, AMD would be starting to sell theirs at. So, you know, it would probably be a good business model, I think try and sell uh, the less core count for uh, less money, get more sales because you can get a better processor for less money. You know, that's what I believe at least. And that's true. And they are going to go that route. And that's one thing that Intel has been, you know, kind of beating their chest over is the fact that, sure, you can spend $3,500 on that chip, but still our most expensive, I mean, which isn't true. There was a quote that one of their, uh, I won't mention who they were, someone with Intel had mentioned, our most expensive chip, you can still, you know, get away with like $800 or something like that. That's not true. You can spend more than that on an Intel chip, you know, but the average better chip is still going to fall between six to eight hundred dollars within their range so yes it's not as powerful but yes it's also way cheaper and uh yeah they they are gonna they might have to take the route of amd in the future in terms of when they do come up with something way more powerful to not charge as much as they're used to to be able to still kind of creep back up that ladder faster than normal um even though it might they might hurt them a little bit because they're going to want more money than that um i don't know that's that's hard to say it depends on which direction they take from here but yes, Intel, AMD, oh, what a future. Uh, hopefully Intel survives and, and, and breaks through the barrier and does something amazing. Uh, and uh, Kiefer made a great uh, point about the NVIDIA video cards. The the 3000 series is wow. So that is a nice jump compared for, to what they did from the the, 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 the 20s, from the, the, the 10s to the 20s. So a great, uh, a great job in NVIDIA's uh, part, uh, except for the price. That, that's expensive, but... But we got that. We got our, our talk on Loki. We got to discuss that. That was for you, Sherry. So, again, a big shout-out to our viewer, Sherry. She's awesome. Her dog, who's also named Loki, is awesome. And, uh, and of course, uh, then we got to talk about anime versus cartoons. So we covered everything today. If you, the viewer, want to talk about something or you want us to talk about something, maybe we'll invite you in, too. You can talk about it, too. Let us know in the comments down there and talk about it down there. Uh, introduce your topics of choice, and maybe we will discuss it in a future video. And, of course, there's that subscription button, so definitely click on that subscription button because we need friends. We definitely need friends. We don't have enough of friends. So if you click on it, that means you're our friend and we feel better. And uh, we, we our confidence level goes up way higher than it is now. I mean, it's pretty good. It's right about right here, you know, but it's, it'd be way better way up there. So click that button, follow us, and use those comments down below. But again, uh, my name's James. Here's Lauren. Here's Robert. And here's Kiefer down there. Uh, everybody, you did a great job. This is a wonderful talk. We have wonderful people, and we can't wait to see what the next episode's going to hold. So stay tuned to next week or whenever we film the next one, and uh, I'm sure we'll have topics just as interesting. Until then, goodbye, and see you next time.